I want to take just a few moments to answer probably the question on most people's mind, and that is, what on earth is going on? God is talking. Well, today we're trying to mop up a mess. We're trying to clean up a bad situation, not only in this pandemic, but in our lives and in our world. But I want to state for you a very important biblical principle if you really want to understand what on earth is going on. Everything visible and physical is preceded by something invisible and spiritual. So if you want to deal with the physical, visible problem, you must identify the invisible spiritual cause. Let me say it another way. If what you see is all you see, you do not see all there is to be seen. Behind every physical reality is a spiritual reality. But if you don't get to that, I mean, look at the pandemic. People are having physical problems about something they cannot see. Until they address what they cannot see, they won't be able to fix what they really do see and feel going on in their lives, in their bodies, and being transferred to the human race. And so in Hebrews chapter 12, we read these words to help us answer the question, what on earth is going on? Beginning in verse 25. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused, when he warned them on earth, much less how will we escape when we turn away from the one who warns us from heaven? And his voice shook the earth then. But now he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we've received the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. When there is a cloudy, threatening day, the weatherman gets a lot of attention because what we want to know is what the weatherman sees, given what the atmosphere looks like. What does he see that we need to know about? Is it going to rain? Do I need an umbrella? Do I need a raincoat? Is it going to be cold? We, we shift how we operate based on what the weatherman has to say. God is talking. And one of the ways God speaks is through allowing circumstances into our lives and into our world that are not pleasant. He allows those circumstances to get our undivided attention. It's a wake-up call. It's sort of like your alarm clock going off. When your alarm clock goes off and wakes you up, it brings you out of one reality of slumber and sleep into a new reality of alertness. The further you remove God from a life, a family, and a culture, the more chaotic things will become. And so oftentimes in the Bible and in the world, God will shake things. What does the Bible mean by shaking? Shaking means when God allows disruption in the normal order of things. Life is going along like you prefer it, like you want it, like you desire it, like you love it. And all of a sudden there is an interruption in the affairs of normalcy. That's what God does all through the Bible. He would shake things up when he wanted to get our undivided attention. The text that we read says, don't turn away from him who is speaking and you know he's speaking because you've been shaken. Your world has been disrupted. This pandemic has disrupted our lives, our work, our play, our sports, our travel, our fun. 
It has disrupted our gatherings. It has turned what was normal and made it abnormal. In fact, it's made it in some sectors very, very dangerous. But this is a grand opportunity to return to the God who allowed the shaking to occur because the text says when God allows the shaking, it is because he's trying to get our undivided attention, which means we have wandered from him. We have marginalized him. We have gotten idols, which is any noun, any person, place, thing or thought that you look to as your source. <laughs> We've gotten something to replace him. God is not just interested in us singing a song, God bless America. <laughs> He's not interested in only a pledge of allegiance to a nation. He's interested in a pledge of allegiance to himself. And when he detects that he is being marginalized and we're more interested in blessing America or blessing something else rather than blessing him, he will allow us a disruption. But the reason he allows a disruption is because he wants to create a new opportunity for his favor. That's why I love Lamentations chapter 3, verses 31 to 33, which says God will allow grief so that we might return to him. So he allows a bad day so that we can desire the sunshine again. We got a bad situation. And I am very grateful for the doctors and I'm very grateful for the nurses. I'm very grateful for the hospitals and the medicine and all the effort being put forth to reduce and ultimately eradicate this pandemic. But if we would allow God who is speaking, who is shaking up our normalcy to become front page news again. I mean, look at what has happened. This situation has got folk talking who weren't talking to each other. I mean, we got folk in Washington trying to agree on stuff because they've been forced to because there's something bigger than them taking place that affects us all. You've got people wanting to help other people that they didn't think of before because they see the crisis. You've got people taking care about cleanliness, about responsibility, because we have been forced into it. God is forcing us to not just say we're one nation under God, but to start acting like we're one nation under God. This is not chance. This is not luck. This is not just a, 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 another virus. It's too big for that. It's too awesome for that. It's too unstoppable for that. This is God saying, not making the disease, but not stopping it from doing what it's doing yet because he wants a focus on him, a return to him. How long do we have to deal with all this stuff we're dealing with until God can get the wrinkles out of America and out of the culture and out of the world and out of our lives and out of our families and out of our circumstances? He wants to get the wrinkles out and he'll keep the heat on no matter how many experts you get, no matter how technically advanced you are. He knows how to bring the heat in order to get the attention. So this trial that we are going through as individuals and as a nation has created an opportunity for you to become part of this unshakable kingdom that is no longer tied, tethered, and limited to what earth has to offer. And God, I am going to praise you for how you're going to use this crisis to bring America together, bring it back to God because it's wandered far away from him and do it in such a way that you get the glory that you deserve and not just a prayer meeting in an emergency when we forget you when the emergency is over. And this is a time when we can glorify our great God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in closing, if you are a Christian, if you're part of this unshakable clean kingdom, I want you to give thanks that this pandemic does not own you because God owns you. And that's why I love Matthew 6, which clearly says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his standard, his righteousness, and all the rest will be added to you. And in that same passage, he says, and when you put my kingdom first, 
I got your back and I have your worry. Your worry will dumb down when your kingdom commitment rises up. If you're here today, this morning, and you're listening, and you're not a Christian, you haven't come to faith alone in Christ alone. Don't go another day without securing your eternal destiny and having divine help in time. And the way you do that is simply acknowledging that you need a savior because you're a sinner. Acknowledging that you can't save yourself because if you could save yourself, you wouldn't need a savior. So acknowledging you are a sinner, that you need a savior and going to Jesus Christ who died on the cross as your substitute, who rose from the dead and who offers you the free gift of salvation if you would simply receive him as your personal substitute. You do that right now and you become part of the, the kingdom that cannot be shaken. You surrender and now learn to live under him and then you will grow in your faith and not be shaken by what's shaking everybody else. This pandemic, as bad as it is, is subject to a greater king who is in charge of a greater kingdom.